you can't change your past, but you can change your future. Um, you know, it's about uh, bringing your future into the present and saying, well, here I am, let's make a choice to do better. As the first black government advisor, why is it important that there is diversity and inclusion within government and also higher leadership positions? Well, diversity is important in government and leadership, not just to have uh, black faces or black faces in high places, but to make a difference. And so when I uh, became a special advisor, the first black British uh, special advisor, it was at the Home Office. And that um, is one of the largest government departments. It covers a lot of issues, um, crime, judges, the police. Uh, the fire service, visas, immigration. But I thought to myself, well, here you are, you know, bloom where you're planted. And so I took that opportunity. It's Amazing. not just about black faces in high places. What was the biggest challenge you faced as a minority in government? I think initially a resistance to change. When I first came to the Home Office, I wanted to do some international comparisons to look at uh, the way other countries did things. And the initial reaction from the civil service was, well, why? Why do we need to? Uh, we're British. So the implication of that was that, well, we're British, therefore the way we do it is the best. And I thought, well, no, it's a big world out there. There may be other countries that are doing things rather better than us. We can learn from them. And that was a shock to me that was that resistance to look at other countries and the way they did things. And of course, I have to remember, my parents from, were from the Windrush um, generation. They came to Britain just after the Second World War on the Windrush ship. And in the um, windows of many of the houses was the sign, uh, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. And that was quite legal. <laughs> so Britain has had to come through that legacy. Uh, it's become more diverse, but the old attitudes are still lagging, especially with the older generation. But I'm very optimistic about the future. Do you think that we have achieved equality in government? And if not, what more needs to be done? Well, equality is uh, a journey. It's not a destination, it's a process, not an event. And so it's step by step, day by day. We are getting there, we're better than we were before, but we're not there yet. But I'm still encouraged, you just have to take one step at a time. The main thing though, is that whatever government does or doesn't do, Britain is becoming more diverse through intermarriage, you know, racial, uh, religious, it's becoming more diverse. So those that social process is happening. It's up to government to encompass that to embrace it and to support it. So your book, uh, Winning the Race, demonstrates how to rise above uncertainty and challenges to achieve your goals. So what is your advice to those who are maybe looking to rise above current challenges to achieve their goals? Well, I would advise anyone in that position, don't, uh, you can't change your past, but you can change your future. Um, you know, it's about uh, bringing your future into the present and saying, well, here I am, let's make a choice to do better. You know, and yeah, you'll get setbacks. I've had many setbacks in my life. I've experienced racism and prejudice and so forth. But I always told myself, you know, don't get bitter, get better. And that's what you have to do. Be Rise above it. You know, take the higher ground each time and keep asking yourself, what can I do to change things? So you were appointed a life peer um, and you were one of the youngest in Lords at the time. So what are some of the benefits that younger people bring um, into corporate environments? I think young people bring energy. Uh, new ideas. They're probably more in touch with modern culture than, the, you know, the golden old is. <laughs> Experience is a very important thing, but it's about both, you know, working together in partnership. And if you think about it, today's youth probably have more uh, black friends and even relatives than maybe they would have had, say, 20 or 30 years ago. So Britain is again changing and they'll be more open to other cultures, other ways of doing things. So it's very important to uh, don't regard young people as a threat. Um, yes, they may lack experience, but it's our duty to mentor them so they can actually improve the, the, the particular company they're joining. And also, you know, young people, you know, the young start on the bottom rung, basically. So they're keen to prove themselves. So, you know, as my mother used to say, you know, uh, if you don't risk it, there's no biscuit. You know, <laughs> you've got to give them a chance to take a risk within a controlled environment.